If you want to see the houses of the Nazi leaders, you are going to be in for a hard time. Almost all have been reduced to rubble during or after the war. The grand country residences of Hitler and his cronies are mostly gone. For example, the Berghof, Hitler's mountaintop residence at the Oberzalzberg in southern Bavaria, was badly damaged in a British air raid in April 1945, then burned out by retreating SS guards, and finally demolished in 1952. Today the site is a grassy hillside thick with trees, the only remains scattered rubble, the faint trace of the driveway entrance and the surface, and the houses rear retaining walls holding back the hill above. Likewise, the nearby homes of Hitler's sinister private secretary, Martin Bormann, and his Air Force chief, Hermann Göring, are almost completely gone. However, all three properties' extensive underground bunkers and passageway systems are largely intact, but mostly not open to the public. Göring's huge country estate, Karrenhal near Berlin, has also been erased, blown up on his orders to prevent its capture by the Red Army in April 1945, though the gates still exist, as well as some rubble and underground passageways. However, one of Nazi Germany's most important leaders' homes remains perfectly intact, though largely forgotten. Borgensee is a small lake near Wandlitz, just over nine miles north of the edge of Berlin. Nestled among trees, some 1,600 feet northwest of the lake shore, is a handsome villa, constructed on land purchased by Berlin City Council and UFA Film Studios, and presented as a gift to Reich Propaganda Minister Dr. Josef Goebbels in 1936 by Adolf Hitler on the occasion of his 39th birthday. Goebbels had a massive villa constructed on the land, the project being completed in 1939 at a cost of 2.3 million Reichsmarks. Inside this 70-room complex, Goebbels lived with his wife Magda and eventually six children, using the villa as a holiday home from his Berlin residence. Goebbels also infamously was something of a predatory sex pest, seducing a series of actresses and starlets, his position as propaganda minister giving him complete control of the German film industry. He exploited this position to the full with many actresses and was not above using blackmail and threats to get what he wanted. The Borgensee Villa was the scene of many of Goebbels' conquests when he wanted privacy away from his family, and it was also a place of serious work, where he formulated and wrote many of his speeches. Goebbels had a cinema built into the villa for film screenings, and it also has several large dining rooms for entertaining on a grand scale, many important guests, among them Adolf Hitler and other top Nazi leaders, visiting over the years. Sitting on a 42-acre plot, Goebbels' villa contains a large number of outbuildings, including a guardhouse for his RSD, Reich Sicherheitsdienst Protection Detail, who were a number of dedicated personal protection officers. There was also accommodation for a rather large bodyguard detachment of SS troops, who guarded the compound and patrolled the perimeter. There is also a garage for Goebbels' huge Mercedes 540K limousine and other vehicles. Incidentally, Goebbels' 540K was captured by the Red Army and survives intact, though unrestored, in a Moscow museum today. See my video on this fascinating story, link in the end screen. As the war progressed and air raids commenced on Germany, and in particular Berlin, Goebbels had a large air raid bunker constructed close to the villa for his family and staff. This was actually partially blown up after the war by the Red Army, though many of the passageways and rooms are intact beneath the ground. The interior of the house is also pretty much the same as when Goebbels lived there with his family, including original bathrooms and light fixtures. The reason it's never been gutted and modernised is the fact that after the war it became part of East Germany, and the cash-strapped communist state kept it in its original condition, using it as a communist youth party school and college. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall, its fortunes have been more mixed, and it has suffered some vandalism and weather damage over the years. Twice offered for sale, in between it was used by the Berlin police for conferences, and was also used as a sort of youth training centre until that shut down a few years ago. A debate is currently raging over whether to restore the building, perhaps to use it in some other fashion, or to demolish it, which is the common fate of most Nazi-era buildings in Germany today.
It remains, however, the last fully intact and unchanged Nazi leader's home in existence today and is therefore an important historical building. Plans have been announced that part of the building may become some form of museum in the future. Oh, and if you're wondering how much they actually wanted for this building, it was in the region of $20 million. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.